All right, hi everybody, and uh, welcome once again to another of our interview series uh, at Engage Rocket. And in this series, as you know, we've been talking to HR professionals and leaders uh, from all industry sectors to allow them to share their views on what is uh, going on right now as we uh, navigate an unprecedented pandemic uh, globally as well as to share maybe some best practices and ideas that they've had with regard to uh, their organizations. And today we have the great pleasure and privilege to have with us Mr. Cornelius Chang uh, from Grab. He's in the People and Organizational uh, Development Department and he has a strong background in consulting. So thanks very much for joining us, Cornelius, and uh, welcome to the show. Great, thank you. Um, so maybe if you could kick us off, Cornelius, uh, just very simply, maybe tell us about more about what you do uh, at Grab so that can, uh, everybody can contextualize it. Yeah, happy to do that. Thank you. Um, so at Grab, I lead the people and organizational development team and that's responsible for uh, three, three main parts, if you will. The first one is around learning and development. Um, the second is everything to do with performance and culture. So whether it's performance management, succession planning, um, employee engagement and culture, all of that fits there. And then the third one, the third part of the portfolio is then much more broadly um, grabber engagement and inclusion. And so how do we, how do we create a, um, a truly inclusive environment for our very diverse workforce to, to thrive and, and perform? Okay, um, perfect. Thank you. So those, those three pillars are very much your rice bowl, like something you have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and actually, that puts you smack in the middle of uh, uh, the subject that we're going to talk about today. And um, I, I guess to, to kick us off on that front, maybe if you could share, how, how do you view the employee experience? What, what is it like to, in terms of uh, conceptually and, and what it, does it mean to you on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, that's a great question and also a very a multi-dimensional question. Um, so the, the, a few different lenses we, we take towards thinking about the employee experience. I think the first one is we take a, the traditional kind of life cycle view uh, from the moment a grabber signs the contract with Grab and looks forward to joining Grab, what can we already start to do to shape the employee experience all the way through to offboarding, right? Um, so there's, there's always the life cycle view and how do we improve the employee experience along every part of that journey? Um, another view that we take is also how we would describe moments that matter. Uh, and how do, we, how do we tap into moments that matter for these grabbers to create the most positive employee experience and, and build a stronger sense of connectivity between grab and grab us. Um, I'll give you an example of, of what moments that matter could look like for us. Um, one that, that I've talked about before is Father's Day. Uh, again, be, being a father is, is something that is beyond just work. Um, and therefore, it's something that is typically a, a moment that matters for most, most people. Um, and in Grab, I remember that one of the things that we did was on Father's Day, we gave a small cookie, right? It was a, a cookie to all fathers. And it was, it was um, available to leaders to take and distribute to fathers in their teams. Um, and on it was just a message from Grab about them as a father, thanking them for the incredible hard work that they're putting in to Grab while being a father at the same time and acknowledging that, right? So that was, that was just an example of how we take a moment that matters and try and build a positive employee experience around them. Another one that we, we were, um, another one that's really in, intriguing for us, but we haven't yet acted on, but it's something that we're thinking about, um, is in Grab, there is, there is marriage leave. Right? Now, if an employee's falling and applying for marriage leave, you know that's a big thing. We have that data. So what are we doing about that to, to create the most positive employee experience in that day, besides not bugging the employee, of course. Um, but is there anything we can do, right, to to help the grabber celebrate that day? Uh, that means so much to them. 
So there's, there's that also second dimension of looking at moments that matter from a personal perspective, right? And how do we use those moments that matter from a personal perspective to create a positive employee experience in the same ground? So that's another dimension that we would look at. So that's really interesting, uh, Con. And, and one, one thing that has always uh, been on my mind, particularly when you talk about these moments that matter, which are, are very important in our personal lives, it, it has always occurred to me that our Asians may be a little bit more touchy about the separation between professional and personal. Do they find it creepy, for example, that, oh, the, why, why is my company like getting involved in my, my father's day or, or marriage? How, how, how is the response been uh, to these initiatives? Um, so the response has actually been surprisingly positive, right? Especially just take the father's day one. Um, it, the, the response was overwhelmingly positive. There, there wasn't any negative uh, response or feedback on that actually that we, we heard of. Um, now, I think the more personal it gets, so for example, things like marriage leave, right? Um, if we were to act on that, then we need to think about how we balance that sense of privacy. Uh, because again, for a lot of people, it is a very private, intimate moment uh, that matters. So the, the idea there, as we think about employee experience, when it comes to moments that matter, is how do we provide infrastructure of support with the data that we have to enable managers and leaders to take action if appropriate. So for example, if I know my team member is getting married and, and I know uh, that for them, it would actually be something they appreciate, then I could do something about it. For another manager where they, because of their deeper understanding of the person, they might say, actually, this is not appropriate uh, then they might not do anything about it. But if we don't have the infrastructure to support the data available to even create that opportunity, then, then that opportunity is completely lost. Yeah. So the idea is to, to at least identify the opportunity, put in place the mechanisms to support taking action in that opportunity, and then empowering the managers to decide whether it's the right action or not to take. I think you touched on a really good point uh, there, right? Because there is an online element to understanding and analyzing the employee experience, but there's also very much the offline element, which is the human touch, which we cannot forget at the end of the day. Uh, I think management, HR, we're, we're in the people business, right? And, and uh, that level of judgment uh, is still there, but without the infrastructure to support that judgment, then uh, we're just, it's all guesswork, right? Or, or sometimes we might not even know that somebody, why is this person took leave, for example? Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. And uh, oh, uh, the other big elephant in the room is uh, in 2020, um, the employee experience really took quite a massive uh, shock. I mean, whether it's positive or negative, actually it's still uh, up for grab, uh, debate, right? I'm not sure. Um, because of the pandemic and the enormous change to the, the way that we were forced to work uh, for a while in Singapore, maybe about 1 to 1.3 million people uh, overnight suddenly had to work from home. And, there were so many concerns initially, wow. and, and now we're more than a year in. We're we're actually wondering, hey, actually, you know, this could work. But at the same time, we do see a lot of companies still pulling people back into the office. Um, how? But even just beyond that, like just the way that we've had to embrace technology tools, the way that we've communicated, the way that management wow. needs to have conversations with their staff, potentially sensitive ones, over wow. electronic means like this. How how would you describe? The, how the employee experience has changed since uh, the start of the pandemic. It has changed in so many ways. Uh, so I, I think the first, the first way to think about is between, for us in Grab, between Grabber and Grabber. And between Grabber and Grabber, I think the biggest change is an increased need for empathy exactly because we're engaging virtually, right? And, and you lose a bit of that in-person cues because now, there are also times where people, after a series of Zoom calls, probably don't want to turn on the videos for the sixth Zoom meeting, right? And so without any of those visual cues, how, how, do, you, how do you still stay attuned um, to be empathetic towards the other person, right? As you're engaging with them. Um, how do you be empathetic to the screaming child in the background in the middle of a meeting, um, all of it. So I think I think that's the first big change that 
it has now demanded a lot more empathy from employees towards one another. Um, I think the second, the second big change is that between organization and employees, so in our case, between grab and grabber, right? And the changes here are a few. I think one is um, flexibility coming from empathy, right? Again, it comes back to empathy. So an example is we realized also within Grab that, and I'm sure this is true of many other companies as well, we realized that there were a lot of employees whose families were not here, who were actually alone in Singapore working. And one of the things that was the most challenging for them is being away from family. People who were used to returning home to whether it's the United States, the UK, India, China, whatsoever, a few times a year to be able to see their families in person could no longer do it. And for, in some cases cannot do it for 12 months, right? Um, and, and that led Grab to, to think of a, a policy around working from outside of your location of employment, right? that you are able to, to during, specifically during that COVID period, be able to um, apply for this program, go back home, be, be where your family's at and be able to work from there, right? Instead of being in Singapore. Um, and, and that that type of flexibility, I think, needs to needs to uh, was something that came up um, in terms of employee experience during during COVID. That was one big change as well. I think another big change between organization and employees also um, the sense of choice or, or giving or empowering grabbers with a lot more choice. Um, what I mean by that is, especially for Singapore, after after uh, the phase one restrictions were lifted, right? Um, and it, specifically actually in, in phase three, where where the restrictions about not returning to office were, were kind of partially lifted. Um, the choice given to grabbers to say, if you want to work from office because your home it does not have the right infrastructure, the right space, right? Um, to be able to come in and to be able to work, work from the office and use, use the space and the facilities. Um, but empowering grabbers to make that choice, uh, I, think, I think was quite helpful because it's also not, not right to assume that everyone has the perfect home office setup, right? Um, there, there are also a lot of families with dual working adults at home in a small space and, and it's often very challenging. Um, yeah, so that was another thing that there was increased flexibility and choice given to, to grabbers. Um, and, and there was much more innovation around policies that came up uh, due to the, the COVID crisis. That's really interesting. And I, I like how you broke it down to uh, like, just between grabber and grabber and first, and, and there's, one, there's one level and then the other level be like grab at first to the grabbers. Um, and I, I would add one more thing, uh, Shito, on, on the mm. grabber side um, that struck me on reflection, which is I think a lot of grabbers, especially the, the team leaders, right, or people managers, also realize that the crisis requires additional effort. It takes much more effort now to stay engaged with your teams, to stay connected, right? In the face of not having the in-person, in-office banter, the ability to, in the office, be able to say, hey, let's go for lunch together. But without all of those, it, it requires actually proactive effort um, to stay connected and engaged. Uh, so something that we took for granted in the physical workspace um, now requires a lot more effort in a, in a more virtual team environment. Hmm. So it sounds like there are, there are almost like three layers of uh, uh, interactions that have changed dramatically, right? So one is that peer level and one kind of like with the team leader or team manager and then one with the organization. And what seems to undergird everything is uh, this idea of greater degree of empathy and greater degree of flexibility and empowerment uh, and, uh, and with the trust that comes with that, uh, right? Um, one thing that, that uh, I've been curious about, because we, we're starting to see, uh, obviously, I mean, I think we're fortunate in Singapore that uh, there, there is a little bit more openness now in terms of uh, and flexibility with, with uh, the arrangements and safety considerations. 
Um, but we are seeing almost like two groups of uh, companies. Right? One company uh, on one hand would say, oh, great, uh, the moment the restrictions are lifted, we're going to get everybody back in the office. Right? And on the other hand, you do find other types of companies that realize over the past year or so that, you know, actually things are all right. Lah. We, don't, we don't really need to uh, force people to come back in the office and then they're considering things like changing the office design to promote more social engagements, uh, reducing the real estate footprint uh, so that they, they are obviously conserve costs, but at the same time also give that flexibility to their staff. Where do you think, where do you think we're headed? I mean, as a, as a workforce between these two extremes? I think, I think both of those extremes will continue to exist uh, because I think in the end, depending on, on each company and the culture that they, they have um, and the principles that they want to, to adopt and abide by, right? they, they would choose either extreme or any way kind of in between. Um, and, and I think for us in Grab, uh, we're working this out, we're figuring this out, um, but I suspect we'll be somewhere in between. But what's important even as we make that decision is, is balancing a, a number of different factors in the end. I, I think the first, the first one is what is the right, if you call it a workplace policy, if you will, what is the right approach or policy around the workplace that will motivate the highest levels of performance? So for example, if, if our grabbers are telling us, you know what, actually this whole crisis has taught me that I'm I, am, I very much prefer working from home. Uh, and the data is showing, assuming the data is showing us that productivity and performance is not dipping, then forcing a return to office might actually be, be uh, uh, not the right thing to do, right? Um, so that, that's kind of one, one consideration. What, what would motivate the, the greatest performance? Another, another consideration would be, well, I don't think we will ever get rid of the office. So as, assuming that we still have our real estate, assuming we still have the office, what is it that would bring people back to the office? What, why would they come back to the office? What do they come back to the office for? Uh, and I think the more important question is, then how do we design the office or redesign the office that needed to suit that? So for example, if, if our grabbers are saying, for, for my deep work where I'm working, individually right i'd rather do that at home because i don't have to say i don't have to waste travel time i'm very productive i have the right setup at home it's all okay um and i actually only go into office because i need to collaborate with my team or we want to do a joint problem solving together then great that that's useful insight to say hey maybe we should be thinking about scaling back the number of desks and creating more collaboration spaces right? versus an arbitrary decision of hey let's just cut the the real estate footprint uh, i think i think the more important question is how do we design uh the footprint we have for for maximum impact given what um, our employees will be using the office space for and what will bring them back um, yeah and then i think for for us especially given that we also have kind of um employees and grabbers in a variety of locations and coming from a variety of countries. I think the other thing that we need to think about is how how, how does this change longer term um, where people work from, right? Not, not just from where the home office, but from a country perspective. Do they need to be in their location of employment? Uh, and it's not as easy as saying, oh yes, we should allow for complete flexibility, we'll allow them to work from anywhere, because they're also <laughs> Um, tax implications, right, for that same grabber. Uh, there are also government restrictions about, about whether you have an entity and all of that that needs to be considered. Um, so it's, for us in Grab, at least, it's still very much work in progress. But those are a few things that we're thinking about. Okay, that's really interesting. And as, as the boundaries, the physical boundaries around the, the workplace are starting to become less defined, uh, and even the temporal boundaries, right, so if we no longer work nine to six, I mean, for most people. Um, this actually had, seems to be putting a greater responsibility on the HR function, on the people office function um, to, 
to be broader uh, in how we consider uh, well-being, mental health, uh, and in some cases, even physical and financial health. Um, where do you see the, 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 the boundaries for, for, for the people or uh, organizational development uh, function that, that you're in? And how, how do you define that? What's the thinking around like, where does the, the corporate responsibility end and personal responsibility begin? Um, I, I think it will be, again, a, a combination of both. I think, I think the starting point is, especially when it comes to personal well-being and, and the health of, of the employee, um, a large part of, I wouldn't say accountability because that's not the right frame or the right uh, point. It's more about the, the level of control and, and ability to make change resides with the individual. Uh, now, that said, we're, we're um, at least for us as people operations, we need to um, step up and help is in helping them build or oh, giving them the right skills, the right capabilities to be able to, one, um, be conscious and, and aware of where they're at. I think a, a big part of the challenge is, especially for us being a very young company with a lot of very young drivers, um, not enough awareness of themselves and whether they're reaching burnout or actually they're already in burnout. Um, and, and raising that ability to self-diagnose, if you will. Uh, then two, creating enough channels, enough uh, resources that are available to our grabbers to help them in their moment of need. So, because again, only, only they can reach out in their moment of need for what they need, right? In, in this topic and in this domain, it's not something that we can just push and, and enforce, if you will, on grabbers. Um, so it's really making sure we, we have curated the right set of support, the right set of resources uh, that are available, making sure that grabbers know that they're there, how do they access them, um, and, and helping them get, get what they need right at the right time in their moment of need. And then the last thing that we're starting to do now going forward is also um, training our, our leaders, our people, managers to be much more aware of this to be much more sensitive um, to symptoms, signals, signs that, that your team might not be doing so well or on team health, on individual well-being, right? Um, and being able to take corrective action there before, before it gets too far down the road. Uh, so that's the approach that we're taking. Yeah, this has been super helpful, Vanitas, uh, and I think we're, we're just about coming up the time. Maybe one last question for you is, uh, as we move forward, what is one key trend that you see that's going to impact the workplace and the employee experience that uh, leaders, HR professionals need to be aware of and take note of? Well, I think that we need to improve how um, teams and organizations operate uh, without reliance on traditional, uh, if you will, setups. I, I, I don't know how better else to describe it, but I, I feel like the way we have, organizations have operated in the past is overly reliant on what is traditional. Until COVID, there was this unshaken sense of, okay, being in office, right? Um, that teams to collaborate effectively, teams need to be in person. Um, and, and I think the biggest trend is a revisiting of a lot of these assumptions that we've taken for granted and, and trying to see how we can actually improve, right? Without those assumptions. Um, yeah, so that for me is, is a, a big trend and a very interesting one. That's a great one, like zero basing our assumptions, right? Starting from scratch. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that. And um, 
Thank you very much for joining us. And once again, everybody, uh, we've had the pleasure and privilege of having uh, Mr. Cornelius Cheng uh, from Grab People and Organizational Development Department with us uh, and sharing his uh, insights. Thank you very much, Cornelius. And thank you all for listening. I hope this has been useful for you. Uh, once again, my name has been Chitong uh, from Engage Rocket.